How about turning your models into weird-looking line art using geometry nodes in Blender? Sounds dope, right? So if you're into this, like and sub, because this should be fun. You can use any object or model you have, maybe go with Suzanne. I will use the kit library free models and go with this cute Pokemon. Now one thing important here is the poly count. We need the model to have a large number of vertices, since we will make it into rings, so that it won't end up jiggly when it connects the points. With this one, we either subdivide it in edit mode a number of times, two or three times should be enough. Or a more general process you can use is to remesh the model, so use the remesh modifier on it using the smooth type. I will put the octree level on 8 or 9 to get the shape back, then we can apply the modifier. The model should be this dense vertices wise, so we can now split the screen to open a geometry node window. Or, switch to Geometry node from the top menu bar. What we need now, after adding a new Geometry node, is three things. One is a Delete Geometry node. Drop it on the line and the object will disappear. The armature is irrelevant to the process. For the rings, we need a Wave Texture and a Compare Math node to work as a Boolean cutter. Connect the wave factor to the compare A slot, then the result to the delete geometry selection as shown. Some points will appear since the B value is on zero, so hold shift and increase little by little, and you will get something like this, which is dope. But what we need is the ring type from the wave, so switch it from here, then put the direction from the next field on spherical. The math can be on greater than or less than and you can try them both to see which one works the best for you. Now we just need to tune both the B value from the math and the scale until you cover the shape with rings. So feel free to experiment with it. Play with the distortion in the wave to get some weird results, and put the details on zero for sharp patterns. Now the rings we made have a large number of poly count inside with all those faces, so we need to fix that using the decimate modifier. Add it to the shape, put it on planar, then use an angle around 30 to 45 to clean the shape while keeping it together and not delete from it. But in general, 30 should be fine. Those jiggly edges are ugly as hell, so drop on it a smooth modifier and spam the repeat to around 30 or more until you're satisfied. You can stop here and call it a day, then work on this with different operations like extrude or wireframe, but we will go an extra step, and it's simple as before to get the shape we had at the start of the video. One issue here and in geometry nodes in general, now that we have this model with heavy poly count, if we continue working on it, it most likely will freeze Blender. So you either apply all modifiers and start with a new geometry node. Or if you want to keep the ability to change those last nodes we added with the modifiers, you can add a new object, a cube, then add to it a geometry node. Delete the group input and use the model you have in the output geometry. This way, it will be much lighter to continue working on it. And we only need two extra things to do. One is turning this shape from mesh to curve, then switch back from curve to mesh using those two nodes, and we did this to get the curve profile. A curve circle node in the profile will do fine to turn the rings into tubes, so scale it down from here and make the resolution on low level. Around 4 to 8 should be enough. For the material, add the one you need in the shader editor or from the settings and assign it in the geometry node with a set material placed after the geometry. Basically drop the set material at last before the output and it should work fine. And that's it. You can now live your dream and spaghettify models or people as you want.
See you guys next time. Stay sharp. Goodbye.